the DIs definitely get more of the percussive stuff of the low end, I mean. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds great. But it's picking up everything, guys. Yeah. I like crepes. A little tiny pencil. Yeah. <laughs> I do, actually. <laughs> There's a place in Canada that we go and just, like, stay there for, like, three hours and, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is Ian's interview, take number one. I had seen a picture of this around the time that I was starting to experiment with like solo acoustic playing, which is a really new thing for me. I'd always played in band situations and more electric, and um, around that time I saw a picture of this instrument and I thought like, hmm, maybe having some extra strings to work with and, and the two fretboards kind of separated would actually allow me to get a little closer to what I was hearing in my head and the things that I was already trying to do on, on a regular guitar. It really only took about six seconds to realize that I was gonna spend the rest of my life doing this. It was like a real instantaneous like connection and I could just feel that there was a lot there to explore and it's been really fun to just kind of like treat it as its own instrument not even like really a double neck but just a 18 string instrument you know um, and that's really you know opened me up to like strange ways of playing it that happened to be musically useful. Drums was my first main instrument that I really studied and um, I still feel like, in a way, I'm, I'm still playing the drums when I play this instrument, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's just sort of on an intuitive level, I've ended up, I guess, finding or trying to find sounds that, to me, will sort of fill the functional role that a, that a drummer might um, do to these songs, and so, for example, like, you know, kind of a hi-hat sound, just like on the high strings, just kind of clicking them against the frets. I use that a lot, you know. And then that that's kind of like a snare drum to me. If, I'm, if I hit like a, a big smacky chord, like. And then, uh, you know, the low strings, lowest string or the low power chord can be sort of like a kick drum. And, and not just sonically, but in terms of the way it functions within the music. So kind of just putting those elements together in my mind, it's a, almost a literal translation from, from like a drum beat, you know. Like I could, I could go play that at the drums and, and in my mind it would be the same thing. I played a lot of different instruments growing up and it's always work to, to, you know, to get better or get closer to that point where you can just kind of be fluent. Whatever comes in your mind, whatever you're hearing, it can just come out. And, um, and this instrument for me was like kind of my first experience of just sitting down and like very quickly, if I was hearing something, I would be able to find a way for it to come out. And I mean, that to me is like the gold standard of, of any instrument or any tool, is if, if it allows you to say what you're trying to say. And um, when I'm composing or playing, I, I don't think of it as like me putting myself or you know, my personality or my human emotions into music and then like making everyone feel that, you know. Um, I sort of think of it more like I'm I'm hearing something or I'm perceiving something in the kind of infinitude that is music and trying to just be like a transparent window to that for people. If you want to do it, it just kind of takes 110%. So, yeah, I'm doing the, the best I know how and, and um, very, very grateful to, you know, that someone's willing to come along on that journey with me and, and more and more people, you know, are starting to support what we're trying to do. And um, 
there's it's it would be impossible for it to go any other way as as far as like at least trying you know at least spending my life doing the best I can to to play better to compose better listen better try to play for try to share it with more people um, it is really inspiring to get to work with a company that has that mentality of of kind of thinking forward and like you know how can this be better or like what can we do that hasn't already been beaten to death you know and that's kind of where I'm coming from musically too and so um, it's it's not an easy road to, to travel you know you have there's always more obstacles and things to figure out and kind of two steps forward one step back kind of process when you're when you're doing something that hasn't exactly been done before that much and um, so I have a lot of respect for ovation taking that attitude and and uh, just you know serving the music in a way serving the musical needs and, and having the imagination and, and uh, you know fortitude I guess to, to to venture into that kind of direction that you know um, let's let's like contribute something new to the world I mean that's what could be more beautiful and, and valuable than that? Innovation is great in and of itself, but even greater if it serves a purpose. For a while, the, the double necks weren't being made. I, I'm really grateful I came along at just the right time where they, they were made for a few years and I, I kind of got one of the first ones, I think. And So it, it's really cool that they're being made again. And um, I, yeah, I think as more people are exploring kind of alternative ways of playing guitar in general, um, I, I think that this instrument will provide some, you know, some fresh possibilities for people. Every, every time I play live, it's like, okay, there's 250 things that I can aim to do better next time, you know, and, um, or even when practicing, you know, there's like this infinite world of ideas to explore that all kind of connect with each other in different ways. And um, it's nice to see a company like really taking the same kind of attitude about really trying to continually improve and, and refine um, in order to, you know, deliver better and better results. So, yeah, we're really, really grateful to be working together. It makes sense to me.